I'm Ty Wickman. I'm the creator of this course on water math. What we're going to do during this course is we're going to start from a position of assuming that you know absolutely nothing about water math. I don't want to take anything for granted, so we're going to start from the very beginning. And through this course, we're going to move on to the end so that by the time we finish this course, you're going to have not only a good foundation of basic water math, but you're going to feel pretty good getting into about the intermediate range of water math. Now, I put this course together because of the fact that it's very hard to learn water math. It's really, really hard to learn from a book, for example. And it's hard to find other material to teach you other ways. Trust me, I know. I looked everywhere there was for it. Um, I definitely didn't do this class for the money. It's, it's just such a niche market that I'm thinking if I sell enough of these to even break even, I'll be happy. Mainly I did it because really there's a need for it. People are coming up to me all the time trying to learn this information, not knowing where they can go to get the information, as well as when I first started, I had a real hard time trying to find the information. So I'm just trying to make it easier for everyone coming along. Now, the format of this class is just a classroom style. That's how I found it works best. And what we're going to do is we're going to work problems together. There's a booklet that comes with this course, and the video is designed to go actually along with the book. So it's kind of a classroom style thing. You're going to work the problems. I'm going to work them on the board, and, and we're going to go through this stuff together. about some things relating to these as we go. Then we'll hop right into the problems themselves. Very important one. One cubic foot of water holds 7.48 gallons. So if you take a cube of water, you can pour 7.48 gallons into that cube. Um, one thing I want to touch on on that is the whole idea of cubic feet real quick versus square feet. If you take a foot and you measure something and it's a foot high by a foot long, now we're talking about square feet. That would be like square foot in relationship to something flat, this wall. We'd be talking square feet. Now cubic feet is when you add an extra dimension to that. So now we're not just talking about the surface of this wall, we're talking about the space in this room. So when we talk about 7.48 gallons goes into one cubic foot, you can pour 7.48 gallons into that to fill that up. Now, the weight of one gallon of water is 8.34 pounds. That's another important thing to do. We'll be using that a lot later on when we get into dosage. You can use those two things, and let's just take a simple problem that, that you might see. What is the weight of one cubic foot of water? Well, we know that there are 7.48 gallons in one cubic foot, and each of those weighs 8.34 pounds. So if you multiply 7.48 times that 8.34, that's going to give you the answer, and the answer is 62.38. Okay, 7.48 gallons in a cubic foot, each of those weigh 8.34 pounds. Right. So you can do the formula. Not everything is shaped like a rectangle out there. In fact, quite a bit of the stuff that we have in this, in this system are circular tanks, like I showed you before. So now what we want to get into is how many gallons of water in a circular tank. The formula we're going to use for that, again, another flashcard, how many gallons of the formula for how many gallons in a circular tank. Diameter squared times 0.785 times the height of that tank. That's going to tell us how many cubic feet are in that tank. We want to know how many gallons, so 7.48. That's the formula to find out how many gallons are in a circular tank. Let's break this down piece by piece. Diameter. Again, diameter is a distance across that tank, straight across. Diameter squared. What that number squared means is you're going to take the number of that diameter and you're going to multiply that number by itself. So in this example, if this were to be 10 feet across, you would take 10 feet and you would multiply it by 10 feet. Now, just so you're familiar with what's going on here, if that were to be cubed or a third, that would mean 10 by 10 by 10. In this case, and in all the cases we're going to be working with today, that's going to be 
squared in this formula, it's always going to be squared. But I just want you to have a basic understanding of what that means. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the diameter distance across and multiply it by itself. 0.785 is a constant. I'm not going to waste time or try to confuse you getting into where that number comes from or what it means. And you probably really don't care at this point if you're trying to just solve this problem. So just memorize it as part of the formula. Times the height, given the height of the tank, or if they're asking for the level of the water, the height of the water. And that's going to give you, again, cubic feet, but we're solving for gallons, so you're going to multiply that times 7.48. Okay? So let's hop in and work on one of these problems. You need to fill a 20-foot high circular tank that has a 15-foot diameter. How many gallons will that tank hold? So, we've got a circular tank. Let's use this little drawing since I already have a wonderful drawing up there. Um, you have a 20-foot high circular tank. It's 20 foot high, and it has a diameter of 15 feet, the distance across that tank. How many gallons will the tank hold? Let's write the formula first, then let's plug everything into it. That formula, again, is diameter squared times 0.785, just a constant number, times height, which is going to be H for height, times how many gallons in a cubic feet, in a cubic foot, 7.48. And that's going to give you your answer. So let's plug these numbers in. We have a 20 foot high circular tank. It's got a 15 foot high diameter. So 15 times 15, that's diameter squared, times this constant number that's never going to change, 0.785. Again, that's just part of the formula. It didn't come from anywhere. It's part of the formula. Times the height. 20 feet is the height of this tank. Times how many gallons in a cubic foot. And that's going to give us our answer. We're going to multiply that straight across. 15 times 15 times 0.785 times 20 times 7.48. And the answer is 26,423 